Good evening, all of you. Greetings to you all in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. It is joy and great privilege for me to share the Word of God with you on this Sunday worship service. I would like to thank our principal, Reverend Dr. John Samuel, and our chaplain, Reverend Dr. Daniel Kribaras, for giving me this opportunity to share God's words with you. I would also like to thank all those who have helped me in conducting this service. Thank you. Let us pray. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable to you, O Lord, our Rock and Redeemer. Amen. My sermon title is I Can't Breathe a theological paradigm for rethinking the Christian identity, mission and ministry today. Along with my appointment letter, I also received a letter from Principal Sir requesting to do a cover design for the Gurukul handbook. He separately sent an attachment of a small devotion about the theme of the year, Breathe the Breath of God. When I first read it, I felt that what kind of theme is this? Why did not they choose a better one than this? Principals are attached his articulation on the theme, explaining the reason to choose such theme by reflecting the present pandemic situation. I was not convinced, but later I realized soon that the theme is exactly reflecting the present situations. I'm really appreciating the Gurukul for choosing such theme for this year, Breathe the Breath of God. When this pandemic has started, I was shocked after watching a video of the COVID affected person in Telangana. The video showed how he was struggling for breathing. I even heard his voice saying that I can't breathe. He expressed his pain for not getting proper medical care from the doctors and the lack of ventilators in the government hospital. From the local channels, I was heard that the person who made the video has struggled for breath and died. His main purpose behind this video making is to get some help, otherwise he was sure that he is going to die. I don't know whether anyone has responded to help him or not, but I felt really sad to hear about his death in the news channels. I understood that Corona lockdown as well as the situation is not same for everyone. Even I noticed that some of the politicians and celebrities were affected by COVID-19. Majority of them are got cured because of the multi-speciality hospitals, well-developed medical equipments and well care of the doctors due to their status of rich. It gave a clear picture of the difference between the privileged and unprivileged lives and the value of human beings in the society based on rich and caste etc. For me, it looks really painful to see such contrast human life in the society. Actually, I should not compare the life based on rich and poor Whoever he or she might be, life is life. COVID-19 gives us space for self-introspection about humanity. Basically, one of non-living things called virus has become a threat to whole human existence. It became a life-threatening and life-taking force. Based on the human cry during this pandemic, I can't breathe. Let us meditate upon the scripture that has been read. John 20:22 is a part of a series of post-resurrection stories recorded about Jesus' appearances. The first post-resurrection appearance is narrated in John 20:11 to 18. 
There, Jesus appears to Mary Magdalene in the garden, and at first she mistakes him as the gardener. John 20:22 20, is the second post-resurrection appearance of Jesus to his disciples. John 20:22 20, in the Greek New Testament reads, "Kai tauto apen nfi sesen," the translated as the living. And having said this, he breathed upon them. The Greek for "inifiesen" means to breathe on. This Greek word has unique nature and even carries a history behind its usage. This passage is unique to John and the particular Greek word can't be found in other synoptic gospels. Such words basically called as hapax legimonen that means they appear only once in the New Testament corpus. The author's usage of this word in his gospel raises many questions. Among those, the two most important questions are, why would the author use this specific term to describe the actions of Jesus? And what is the author's intention to communicate by using this word to describe the act of Jesus sending his breath upon his disciples? By contemplating on these questions, these questions and on the Greek word, let us move to today's reflection on the theme, I can't breathe. I divided the sermon into three topics. My first point is, I can't breathe, rethinking the Christian identity. The web, empusavo appears 11 times in the Greek version of Hebrew Bible. This word symbolically used in Genesis 2 verse 7, to show that God's activity of breathing the breath of life upon Adam. Even the Greek words anake in the beginning. In John 1, 1 is also directly taken from the Septuagint for his biblical and theological constructions. The author took this word from the Genesis to unite the creation theme into the re resurrection of Jesus. John has two purposes here to, to do. One is to show Jesus as the agent of the original creation and the second one is to show Jesus as the agent of new birth and new creation. The breath or spirit of God that is Elohim Ruach being the grand principle and cause of his spiritual and divine life. The action of Jesus breathing his breath upon his disciples was understood as the breath of life, Genesis 2-7, which related to the first creation of human being when God breathed into human being the breath of life so that he became a living soul. So, Jesus breathing is all about new life and new covenantal identity and his disciples became the first fruit of this new creation. The first fruits in 1 Corinthians 15:20 refer to Jesus' resurrection. In just John's chapter 3, this new life explained by Jesus to Nicodemus as born again, born from above, and spirit born. The statements like born of the spirit and children of God can be seen in entire the Johannine corpus. In Romans 8, 14 to 15, the spirit sonship also emphasized by the Paul. All those verses confirmed that the Christians are dead to sin unto the world and resurrected and alive in the spirit and Christ, which is a new identity. We are living in a world where identities became breath and even the dominant society decides one has to breathe or not. Let me explain another incident to understand this. That is the death of George Floyd. His last words, I can't breathe. The words, I can't breathe, came out of his mouth was not due to this corona pandemic, but due to the oppression of the white. 
George Floyd was killed brutally because of the evil racism. Apart from these viruses, there are other forces that takes away the life of human beings endlessly are the racism and the caste. My second point, I can't breathe redefining the Christian community. The same Greek word Empusavo is also appears in the book of Ezekiel chapter 37 verse 9. When God breathed the breath of life upon the dry bones in a valley, which is a social breathing. The verb in Genesis 2-7 as creation theme is also appears in 1 Kings chapter 17 verse 21 and even Ezekiel 37 verse 9 in connection with the ideas of restoration and resurrection of Israel. In this text, John presents the cross and resurrection and connects with a new covenant indicating the creation covenant. The Septuagint text was well known to the John's audiences like Jews, Samaritans and even Greeks which was often recited in synagogues from memory like a corporate confession of faith. So they understood that Jesus is the agent of covenantal relation in relation with the giver of the breath of life. John wanted his community to know that Jesus' action of breathing is understands as a inaugurating a new creation or humanity with a new covenant, so they becomes a new covenant community that was guided by and led by the Holy Spirit. Biblical scholars consider it as a Johannine Pentecost. Since the church is born from the experience of Pentecost, as a church is basically animated by the Holy Spirit, so it should be contrast to the society because the world is animated by the, those fallen humans and demonic spirit forces which create social structures and institution in opposition to the purpose and presence of the living God. For example, Manu's creation of caste system, which is social hierarchical structure with strong rigid rules. The rules of caste and caste identity create divisions and hatred feelings among fellow beings. Caste is also becomes a breath to some privileged but to some, it becomes a life-threatening force that took their breath away from them. The recent incident of the gang rape of Manisha Valmiki at Hatras is the example. The dominant communities protested against the arrest of the rapists in order to support them because of the feeling of dominant of their caste that completely denying the justice to the victim. In this pandemic situation, by looking at such disturbing events made me to think which is the real threat to the humanity. Whether is it COVID-19 or are the ideologies of the dominant which stops the breath of the oppressed in the society. One day the vaccine comes, the pandemic will end. But what kind of vaccine is needed to cure such mental illness of evil forces like caste and race? Caste considered as a social evil, it's a state of mind and it is divisive basically in its nature. Dr. Ambedkar says that caste is a mental illness. If you look at Jews, completely nullified the purpose of God by reducing their chosenness as a race. The attitude, the attitude of their racial superiority can be noticed in the Gospel of John where they claimed themselves as a children of Moses and Abraham. Knowing this, Jesus harshly called them as you are the children of devil. You can see that one in John chapter 8. Likewise, Christian who lives in the caste consciousness becomes the children of Manu. By professing caste, they are promoting the values and rules of Manu, which are life-denying force even inside the church. The cosmos, that means the world or society, is polluted by 
these feelings of racism and casteism, which are life-negating forces that are deeply rooted in the minds and hearts of the people for centuries. But Johannan community is not like that. John's, John's Jesus says to his disciples, which is my translation, if the dominant society, that is cosmos, hates you, be aware that it hates me before it's hated you. If you belong to the society, the society would love you as its own because you do not belong to society. But, you have cho but I have chosen you out of the society, therefore society hates you. This can be found in Luke's chapter 15 verses 18 to 19. Five years back, NCCA came up with a slogan which churches never took heed on. That is, no one can, no one can serve Christ and cast together. As a chosen community, are we dead to Christ and live in Manu or dead to Manu and live in Christ? Now, the basic question asked to the church which is promoting the caste, whose values, value, whose values is it promoting or the values of Manu that contains the life negating forces or the values of Christ that promotes life? My third point, I can't breathe, reshaping the Christian mission and ministry. I can't breathe, reshaping the Christian mission and ministry. In today's Pericope, verse 22, the action of Jesus breathing upon the disciples is a gift of power enabling them to ministers as apostles, which is a special ordination called Donum superaditum. In Jesus, sorry, in John's 2022, they experienced a new relationship with the Holy Spirit in preparation to fulfill the missiological purposes. The main motive of Jewish mission and conversion, unlike Jesus, was to retain their identity and to promote the Jewish nationalism. The Holy Spirit is the gift endowed upon the disciples who enabled them to continue the supernatural ministry of Jesus on earth. Jesus' mission is all about the universal salvation and promotion of life. As a Jew, Jesus had crossed the racial, ethnic and religious boundaries to give life to the Samaritans and all other Gentiles. Here Jesus identified with the Johannine community. The Greek verb empusavo shows the radical characteristics of the Johannine community and its mission and ministry as a new creation. Johannan community was a spirit-led community as trans-ethnic community that mixed of Gentiles, Samaritans, Gal Galileans, uh, Galilean communities who were actually the followers of Jesus. The biblical scholar Hilade calls this Johannan community as anti-society. That is a group, uh, group that exists within the dominant society as a conscious alternative to it. Even Malina and Rohar Bagh say that it was an alienated group that had been pushed to the social margins which stood to protest to the life-threatening values of the superior society. The scope and depth of this alienation is evident in the language of the Johannine Gospel itself. The church is the dwelling place of the Holy Spirit and it is both a witness of life to a dying world and it is a sacred space which profess the sacredness of every human life within this world. So, the church is to embody before the world a distinct social political alternative as the body of Christ and also it is becoming the counter community. Lack of inclusiveness is the root cause of many burning issues in all the nations. There is wide, widespread bias 
in the treatment of blacks, margins, minorities, Dalits, the poor, the tribals, the marginalized ETC, displaying blatant exclusiveness. The way in which the sections of society are discriminated against, denying dignity and not given equal access to justice that betrays lack of inclusiveness. As Pope Francis says, we cannot tolerate or turn, turn a blind to racism or exclusion of any form and yet to claim to defend the sacredness of hemi, every human life. And also Boston Archbishop Sino Melli said, it is time for our communities to, communities to address the injustice suffered by the African-American communities. Now, it is the time to recommit to cleansing our society of systemic racism. Therefore, it is high time to the church, the body of Christ, to relinquish her casteist nature and promote the sacredness of human life. The Christian mission and ministry is a life-promoting 